Can you hear me? Sorry, well, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for being here today. My name is Manuel Diaz Sevian, I'm the curator of Pita Design. Well, before starting, I wanted to tell you that Pita Design has, has been conceived this year to create a platform to explore where Latin American design stands for its position. So let me give you the back. Um, this, um, the Mexican the pavilion, the Latin American pavilion is completely linked to this talk. So we hope after this to have some nice guidelines and some nice results to know where, more and more or less where after this exploration and debate where we are located. I have decided to start this, this talk with, uh, with a slide on the, what people have written on the world of, of the Latin American stand answering the question that the American design is. It's quite interesting, obviously I'm not intending for you to read all the, all the interesting things that people have written there, but you, could, you are invited to come to, to, the, to the pavilion F01 to see not only the wall, but also to write down some of the, I mean, some, what it comes to your mind um, after reading this question. Uh, so well, and uh, before before actually introduce uh, the, our group of panelists today, I wanted to I wanted to thank the, all the people that have made this possible, from individuals to corporations. Thank you, thank you so much. So well, I wanna I wanna uh, introduce Damien Whitmore, uh, who will chair this debate. Damien Whitmore uh, has worked in the arts and media for over 25 years. From 1990 to 1992, he, has the head of, he was the head of development at the Design Museum before becoming, before becoming communications director at the Tate Gallery in 1992. In 2000, he oversaw and directed the complete rebranding of Tate and in May that year, directed a hugely successful launch of Tate Model. Damon is now the director of public affairs and programming at the Victoria and Albert Museum and he lectures all over the world. So thank you all for being here, and then I pass over to Martin, please join us. Uh, Manuel, thank you very much for that very kind introduction. And hello everybody, and welcome. And we are going to be um, wrestling with this question, which is, does Latin American design exist? Before that, I'm going to introduce our two guest speakers. And the first on my right is Marco Ortiz, who is a Mexican and a practicing architect. And he runs Emergent Design Studios, um, which is a company working throughout the UK and Latin America. And my wonderful colleague, from the VNA, uh, Glenn Adamson, who is head of research and works with me on the uh, creation and the realization of um, exhibitions at the museum. So we're going to be talking for about 35 minutes about this subject um, of Latin American design and then we'll hand over to you uh, for your questions and comments. And just to get things going, Marco, do you, think, do you really think that we can talk about a national or a, or a continental design style? Well, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, hola a todos. I'm the Latin American representative here. <laughs> So, to your question, to your question, Damien. I don't think that uh, perhaps uh, national versus continental. I like more the label of regional, because regional uh, transcends uh, boundaries. Regional, uh, our, our wonderful uh, uh, region, has a, a great story of, uh, of migra migration, a great story of uh, civilizations uh, that settled there, and. And, and change places and, and share resources and trade it. And the regional tag to me is, is more appropriate in that way because you know national boundaries and so on. You know that uh, art and, and applied applied arts or design effectively transcends that. So um, and there are many regions in Latin America that are not necessarily a country. We're going to come up to that. And so Glenn, um, we have. I think wrestle and struggled with this question of national design at the VNA for quite a long time. And we've tried it with China and with Britain. And we are about to look at Brazil. But I wonder if you could, have we cracked it yet? Yeah, that, that's a very good question, Damien. I think it's a particularly good question when it comes to Latin America. 
and indeed Africa, which we're not talking about tonight, but it's a similar case for us. Um, I think it's important to state right at the outset that the VA historically has not covered Latin American design. And I guess you could say the difference between the VA covering an area of the world and not covering an area of the world is a very big difference. So we, we have literally millions of objects from Asia, and we have hardly anything from Latin America. Why is that? Really, it's because of prejudices that existed in the 19th century uh, that had to do with a Victorian conception of which cultures in the world were considered to be artistic and worthy of emulation, and which parts of the world were not. Obviously, it has had a lot to do with um, the parts of the world that the Victorians had a colonial or imperial relationship to as well. So with their commitments in India, particularly Asia, was a very important area for them to collect. That's very much the beginning of our institutional history. Well, now, in the early 21st century, we find ourselves in a situation where the museum has effectively missed 150 years of activity in these key areas of the world. And that's become more and more of an embarrassment, frankly, and something that we regret very much, particularly if you look at a comparison with, let's say, the British Museum, which is in many other cases a very comparable kind of sibling institution. Um, and therefore, when we think about representing Brazilian design, let's say, which we'll talk about more, in the V&A, it's actually a very different proposition to um, representing Chinese design, for example, or British design, indeed. Um, I, I guess I would just say, though, also in an introductory way, that I don't think that we've really cracked this question of how to represent national design in the museum. We can talk about that a bit more, but I would say basically the answer is no. I'm happy to talk about regional, or we'll, we'll talk whatever you like. And so can you talk about, does it exist in Latin American regional design? What, what can you say about it? I think it, uh, it uh, definitely, definitely does. I think you can refer to it as a very uh, distinct um, entity. Um, I don't think it is, it is comparable at all to anything you can see um, um, elsewhere. In terms of the, this, uh, this craving that we have across the region to, to tie back to our roots, the roots of the, 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 the ethnic roots, and uh, this uh, uh, in different periods, uh, these uh, 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 waves of uh, European influence, and it is this mix of of, of European and, and broadly European. We find that in, in you know in modernism, the influence was more Germanic, um, um, and and there was the Gothic, of course. But uh, aside aside from that, there is this, this this mix that ties us to the roots. But as well uh, creates a, a, a beautiful, a beautiful, uh, 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 you know, melange, a, a mix with the with the with the influences that we get from from Europe. Yeah. I mean, what what, what I, I think I agree with that. What I've seen is a kind of European styling mixed with a kind of local flavour. But Latin America is quite a complex region, uh, and so is Paraguayan design different to Bolivian, different to Chilean. Is, is there a regional within the region? I think you can you can uh, you can understand the, the nuances as with everything. You need to go there. You need to leave. You need to leave the cities. You need to see the, the buildings, how the cities are drawn, the products, the, the way people live, the houses, and so on. And you'll very quickly come to realize that uh, to me there are there is a, a very very interesting distinction between the more uh, uh, sort of the eastern part of Latin America with the Caribbean, with Venezuela particularly. Uh, Colombia has, has a lot to do with that in Brazil. Uh, countries that, uh, in, from my perspective, are, are incredibly free, are incredibly detached from uh, an establishment, uh, in terms of uh, perhaps an academia or, or a kind of more established uh, uh, system to comply with. And the rest of us all, in the, in the western part from the, you know, from Chile, from Chiloé to Tijuana, have uh, have this uh, this characteristic of, of uh, more being more tied to the to Spanish influence historically, um, have a richer uh, um, um, uh, historical pre-Columbian uh, uh, past in terms of design and, and, and you know and, and architecture and so on. 
So those those would be two, two, two massive ones. And within this, you know, uh, of course, you know, from Tijuana, and if you draw a line between Tijuana and Chiloé, and you turn it into the horizontal, you kind of cover Asia. So you see that the, the, the breadth of the region. I think one thing that always strikes me about it, and this is a very general comment, is a, a very strong craft tradition, which sometimes can be amazing and sometimes can slightly border on the kitsch. And I wonder whether you could say a bit about that. Yeah, this is hardly uh, specific to Latin America, of course. Uh, and you can find it here in Britain and certainly any other part of the world. I think in Latin America it has a particular resonance for some reason. There's this idea that um, Latin American design and indeed fine art, which you can see represented very well here in Pinta, I think, uh, that Latin American design has a grounding in the ad hoc, what in Italy was called Arte Povera strategies in the 1960s. So it's a kind of vernacular rootedness, and it's also, um, I suppose, a kind of adaptive, creative, and instantaneous design mentality. This is what, of course, the Campana brothers, the inevitable name that are raised with reference to Brazilian design, this is what they play with so intelligently, and I think it's a big part of the reason for their global success. And I think just to go back to your previous question, Damien, one answer to the question, does Latin American design exist, would be to say, only to the extent that it's marketed or branded as such, only to the extent that we talk about it as Latin American design and ascribe it or assign it these characteristics, does it come to seem distinctive? And that's not meant as a cynical comment at all, quite the contrary. In fact, you could say that being able to successfully brand and market Latin American design as such is crucially important for practitioners in that part of the world. But then it also becomes very important to think about what characteristics are going to be attached to those objects, and if they don't fit, what will happen? Do you agree with that, Tom? Well, broadly, 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 yes. I think that uh, that the vernacular um, is uh, um, is very colorful in our part of the world, and that tends to perspire and um, into into various uh, realms of design. So you see, you know, some of the projected images here to somebody who's not familiar with Latin American design will catch it immediately. It's, as you say, it's, it, it's, uh, it's, it's very basic, it's very resourceful in that it comes from very limited resources and the, expressive, the expression, uh, how expressive it is relates to natural environment of uh, places with a lot of, you know, beautiful fruits and colored birds and, uh, and, and people historically taking inspiration from that to color themselves in the way they dress or, or the, the way they, they paint their houses and, and you, you, you pick up in design a lot of that. But it's also of course a product of poverty. I mean that's another aspect of this sure. we have to confront. Sure. That, and I think we need to be very careful about, um, well even celebrating, but certainly not fetishizing or stereotyping the outcomes of what is for the person making the object a rather desperate situation. And so when I see these images floating around on the internet that often are quite humorous about people adapting their bicycles or doing things with everyday objects that are in fact quite creative and very admirable in a sense. We should also realize that that has another side. It's rather like the conversations that have been had in architecture about admiration for the favela. I, I, wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that because I think this resourcefulness is virtuous, it's beautiful. I had the opportunity to discover Latin America from Morocco when I lived, uh, I designed a, a restaurant over there and, and I discovered these, these, these uh, well, there's a lot of roots that are shared, but this resourcefulness to me is, is beautiful, it's, it's, it's inspiring and I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, necessarily feel that you have to be careful about it. I, I think there is something distinctive about design from that region and it, and it seems to me to do with scale. I mean, everything just seems enormous there to me, enormous flags, enormous skies, enormous land. It's to do with textures, and it's to do with colour, and it's to do with a particular kind of modern...